Hi, my name is Mandy and welcome to Piccadilly Stitch. Today I'm participating in the Sew Top Challenge, which has kindly been set up and organised by Claire from Penguin and Pear. <music> throughout August a sewing vlogger on YouTube will sew a top and provide you with a review and here's a link to all the different sewing vloggers and the days that they will present in their vlog So I'm following on from Renata, who is a Twilight Stitcher, and I'll put a link to her vlog down below. So what have I made? Well, I've made the Brasnov top by Itch to Stitch. Apparently this pattern came out in 2017, so I'm a little bit late to the party. I've been wanting to make a pattern from itch to stitch for quite a while now and this seemed like the ideal opportunity now what inspired me to make this top was the fact that it said it was universally flattering and goodness knows I can do with all the help I can just lately and the fact I just thought it looked really elegant and it put me in mind of something Gillian Anderson might wear on that program you know the series the four so yeah i thought it looks really pretty and it looks very modest too because as you get older um, your decolletage um, you know is something i don't quite want on show so much so it passed the old four finger challenge so let's talk about the pattern well the pattern is a pdf so i downloaded the pattern no problems and what really impressed me about this pdf pattern was the fact that you could just print out your size if you so wish to do so because the size range is very inclusive and i'll just pop a screenshot up now of the of the different sizes It's no good <laughs> i'll put my glasses on i can't see my notes okay so like i say there's quite a, a wide size range and i've um printed off quite a lot of pdf patterns in my time and one of the problems that i find is because now pattern companies are becoming more size inclusive and there's a diverse range of sizes which is a good thing um, you'll find that there's a lot of dashes, dots and all different markings for the different sizes and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to actually fathom out which size you're cutting out. So what you can do is you can just, like I say, print out your size. Now sometimes we might need to customise the pattern. So you might be a size 12 top, a 14 waist, a 16 hip. You can actually print out as many sizes as you like and they will overlay so if you wanted to print out a 12 14 and 16 you just tick those and those will print out for you so yeah it was quite impressive that way and also in the instructions um, they gave you how to grade out um, or you know grade in whatever you needed to do for this top they also give you some instructions to make the pleats a little bit longer if you were a smaller bust. However, I didn't need to do that, as you can tell. So, um, yeah, that's the pattern. The other thing I'd like just to say is that out of all the PDF patterns I have assembled, this was the easiest one. Because each tile or piece of paper had a number watermarked on it. So it was just so simple to put together. The other thing as well, um, they do supply uh, the copy shop as well if you want to send your pattern off for printing. So that's about the pattern. The other thing I do with PDFs as well is I just print out the pattern and then I um, download you know, the instructions onto my Kindle app on my iPad. 
that way any um, well there's two reasons for that one is for um, it saves paper and secondly if I want to make a diagram bigger I can just uh, pinch out on the screen so uh, you can see it more clearly so I think I've covered everything I need to about that I think I have mentioned that they do suggest that this pattern is for an intermediate sewing so let's talk about fabric they suggest a light to medium weight knit fabric with 50 to 75 percent stretch and it has to be a 54 inch wide um, or 35 centimeters because the, f the left and the front you cut on a single piece so you'll need to have that width to fit the two pattern pieces on um, they did say for my size which I did a size I made a size 20 um, I needed one and three quarters I think that was meters and um, most online shops only supply in the UK this is they uh, usually supply uh, half meter increments so I, I'd already ordered last year from Stitchy Bee this black jersey, uh, two meters of it, and uh, yeah, I had um, I would say a quarter of a meter left, so uh, it was a uh, quite a good guess that was. So I'll just show you a picture of me wearing the Brasnov top in my garden. <music> So I knew this wasn't going to show up as well uh, on the vlog. So I ordered some red velvet from Minerva Crafts last week and made the top up in the red velvet so I could just show you the detail. So here we are. So this is my Brasnov in velvet. So it's got this beautiful pleat detail. So what you do is you've got a left and a right front, like I say, and then you've got this beautiful pleat detail on the shoulders and I'll bring it I'll just bring her a little bit forward so you can see that whoops so like I say you've got this beautiful um, detail on the shoulders the sleeves are full length. I have seen one blogger who'd made her top with three quarter sleeves, but um, I made no alterations to this pattern. What I really do love as well is this beautiful pleat detail at the side. So I'm going to <laughs> attempt to lift my mannequin up and that is the pleat detail. I've got the nap of this velvet running down and I just thought it looked far richer the folds did um, you know the shade so uh, yeah I'm really pleased with this and let me just explain the bottom of this top it's like a tulip sleeve so it sort of overlaps so I thought that was really pretty as well now I think they call it a surplus collar I'm not sure surplus but anyhow the cut the two fronts meet at the back and when I sewed this one up it was late at night and I did make a bit of a boo-boo a with it and in the morning when I reread the instructions it was really clear as crystal uh, what I needed to do so um, I tried to amend my mistake but it is quite forgiving so uh, I'm not too um, troubled by that but yeah that's my uh, Brasnov top I have uh, tried and tested this pattern I have uh, gone out in it already my black one and there is no wardrobe malfunction may I add so there is no falling open so no cleavage incident so uh, yeah it's comfortable 
I just love it and I'm going to make some more. I'm also going to make a, a couple of them for my daughter as well because not only are they flattering, I think this will help. Uh, this would be a good top to wear if you're nursing a baby. So yeah, um, that's all I can say. I shall be uh, making some more uh, itch to stitch patterns and I've already made myself a member on her Facebook. The other thing that I need to just say is that with this one I used, and on this, I used polyester thread and I used a zigzag uh, stitch. I will say with the velvet I used a walking foot as well uh, to help feed the velvet through. But I had no problem. It's a very detailed instruction so you can't go wrong really, you really can't. <laughs> Um, they explain everything to you. The only thing I would say is that, you know, I needed um, to sew this on my dining room table because when you come to lay the two fronts out, you lay the right front on top of the left front. And I did get a little bit confused, so I had to lay it out like it showed in the diagram. But that's just my um, learning technique. I'm a visual learner. So that was fine, yeah. Um, I think it's taken me the first time, I think it took me maybe oh three to four hours to sew up, but um, yeah, it was um, so detailed, and um, I'm looking forward to making some more itch to stitch patterns. So, tomorrow it'll be Ruth from So Dysfunctional. And um, yeah, I don't think she was giving too much away the other day when I watched it. And I'd just like to say uh, thank you again to Claire from Penguin and Pear for setting up this challenge. Mm -hmm.